yeah, talking that would to be you. It. <laughs> that would definitely be you, yes. Hey, bro, I'm trying to get this. Just... I appreciate that. Just won't take long. So I am recording. Wahoo, even though we're all here. But hey, like I said yesterday, you may want to go back and like rewatch something, which why not? So today is 9 12. And our mission for today is we are going to add and subtract polynomials. Really, what I'm trying to accomplish over the course of the next like week or so is I just want to cover all bases. And by the way, division is way harder. So when we get to division, that's like pump the brakes. That takes a week. Um, yeah, it's pretty rough. But adding and subtracting and multiplying is the mission for this week. Uh, so today we're going to knock them both out because adding and subtracting, you treat them the exact same way. This the subtraction is way more missable if you're that kid that I was talking about earlier who thinks that directions don't apply to them. So got it. So I have six examples in my note card and I, we should just blow right through them. Um, so to add polynomials together, when you see a problem where you're supposed to add polynomials, you'll know. So you're going to have a polynomial like this. So you'll notice that we have a couple, and we can now name these because of yesterday, right? Which reminds me, we should grade that homework, but we don't have to do it right now. Um, now that we went through yesterday's lesson, we can look at that first one and give it a name. What is the first polynomial called? Um, Rad, good teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Good job, you guys. That's a quadratic trinomial. And honestly, that's not really that important at the end of the day, but... I'm glad you knew that. That's awesome. And what is the second polynomial going to be? Quadratic. Binomial, because it's only got the two terms. So here it goes. Uh, and if you're listening, which, again, I can only imagine how hard it is sitting through stuff from people like me all day. But gosh, just give me like nine minutes here, would you? See the plus sign in the middle of the problem? Yeah, that sure. means that this is the easiest thing anyone's going to ask you to do all day. That is not going to be what I say when that's a minus sign in the middle. But when it's a plus sign, you can take this very lightly. So what we're going to do is, first off, you should be a little bit upset that the second polynomial is not in standard form. But that's OK, because what we're going to do is we're going to fix it as we build our answer. So like I hate that the constant term comes before the quadratic term. But like I said, I'll get over it because as I pluck the parts and pieces out, I'm going to put them in the dang order that I want to put them in. So because it's a plus problem, all I have to do is go through and gather like terms. And I'm going to color code the Dickens out of this for you. So I always want to start with the highest degree because if my answer is going to go in standard form, then I want to go and pluck out all the high degree terms first. So I'm going to go pluck out my 3x squared from here. And I'm putting red around it just for your convenience so you can kind of see it. And then I'm going to go to the other polynomial and see if I can find any other quadratic terms, which I can't. And so what I see is those two red box terms are, of course, what we call like terms. And how many of them will there be when we put them together? So the first part of my answer is 4x squared. I want you to take note, mental or otherwise, of the fact that I am showing no work. Me drawing my cute little colored boxes is just me being your instructor. That's not really showing work. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is work my way down the chain, and I'm going to go to the linear terms. I want to scaffold my way down until I get down to the lowest degree. So I'm going to look for terms that just have x in them, and I see one right here. And then when I go to the second polynomial, there is none, which means that I can just put minus 4x straight down into my answer like this. If he has no one to combine with, that's it. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to search out my constant terms, which are right here. There's a negative 15 or a minus 15. And because of this plus sign, I can ignore the plus sign and I can ignore the parentheses. I say this is just easy pickings. With addition, you just go and pick out the pieces you want, mash them together, call it a day. So uh, no, careful. Negative 17, right. 
And that's how easy it is to add two polynomials together. It's literally just, it looks like something different, but at the end of the day, it's really just combining like terms. So I'd like to do a couple more addition, but they won't take four minutes each like that one did. The first one always takes the longest. Now we're gonna we're gonna blow through a couple more. No, this is the best we can do. Can you guys tell me why this has to be my best answer? There's why nothing else there's nothing else. Right. There's no more like terms, right? So that's when I know I'm like, I'm done. I can't I can't go any further than that. Right. Easy peasy, right? No, you can't solve anything that doesn't have an equal sign in it. All we're doing today is just practicing the fine art of, it's called simplifying, not solving, but simplifying. That's all. Next one. So we're going to start with a cubic binomial like this. And we're going to add to it another quadratic trinomial. And this time I have it in standard form already for you. Again, not that it matters really. Because at the end of the day, we're going to put things in standard form because we want to. My, what's my highest degree term? Right. And I don't feel like I need to keep drawing the colored shapes. And so do you spy anything in the second polynomial that can go with the cubic term? Yeah. I don't either. So I'm just going to copy 5x to the third right down into my answer. Now, don't go to the minus 10 next because he might be next kind of in your sight but he's not the next down the ladder. So we want to look for quadratic terms now. Do you see any? Uh-huh. And since he's a positive and we have no reason to change him, then we're going to copy plus 6x squared into our answer. After that, we want to go down to the linear term. Remember, that's the x with the invisible one exponent. Do you see any of those? I see it right here where that purple arrow is pointing. And again, he has no one to go with. So... We're just going to copy plus 3x into the problem or to the answer. And the next one is minus 21. Good job, Tuff, because I got a minus 10 here and a minus 11 here and put those together. Do you feel like we need to do another one of those or are you okay? You okay? You want to go again? You good? So addition, if I haven't made this point abundantly clear, um, addition is really easy. However, I need you to understand that I'm going to ask you to do something in the next set of problems, and I really, really would appreciate it if you do it, because I'm on your side. I want you to be successful, but I need you to do one extra step when we switch gears now. So now for the second half of this, we're going to do subtraction, and it makes a huge difference. So let's get to it. And you've already kind of done some of this, like when you were solving your equations on the last quiz, you already get the idea of distributing a negative, so it's not like it's like a brand new concept, but it just feels new because it has a new name. So uh, here is a polynomial. Bless you. I'm asking this of you because I care. And I just don't mean to beat this horse to death, but please trust me. Uh, this isn't my first time through this. I'm not like experimenting here. I have years and years and years of proof of the fact that if you skip this next step, things can often not, I'm not guaranteeing, I'm not challenging you. I'm just telling you you're, the likelihood of things going downhill is vastly higher. So here's what we're going to do. In the last problems that we did, there was a plus sign in the middle. And I was like, who cares about distributing a positive one? Like it doesn't matter, right? So we don't show work. In this problem, what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel the parentheses off because of the minus sign. The minus makes everything in the second half of the problem what it appears not to be. Yeah, it makes pluses become minuses. What else does it do? Minuses become pluses, positives become negatives, negatives become positives. And I just know from experience that if we don't let ourselves see it, things oftentimes go poorly. So here it goes. Notice that in front of the first parentheses where this red arrow is pointing, there's nothing. And so I can just peel those off free of charge. So 4x to the fourth, minus 7x, and minus 2x squared. 
The entire meat and potatoes portion, though, of this lesson is on based on that guy, that evil minus. Ask any algebra teacher. They'll tell you minus is in front of parentheses. Oh, Nelly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the second set of parentheses off, but I'm not just going to do it brainlessly. I'm not going to do it like just willy nilly. I'm going to change everybody as they come out. So what's the, going to be the first thing I write? So minus 5x squared. Good job. Who's going to go after that? So plus 6x cubed plus 9. And it's really easy to sit there in that seat and say something like, this guy's crazy. I could have done that in my head. You're the not the first one. Take it or leave it. It helps. And it takes like when I'm not yip yap and it takes like seven seconds to do. And now what I can do is I can go through and identify and just cherry pick my like terms. So who's my highest degree? Fourth. So I have four of those X to the fourths up front and I have minus three of them way back here. How many X to the fourths will that make? Just one. Yeah. So X to the fourth. Remember always when you're combining like terms that the things, what they are doesn't change. How many of them you have is what changes. All right, let's head down the ladder to X to the thirds. I do see one right here and I do not see any others. Am I missing anything? Then let's copy that next. And then after that, good job. So we also have minus seven. That is the next one because we already did our thirds and now we're you okay you sure I'll, I'll switch colors again so we had a negative two and a negative five put those together you get your negative seven and then just keep scaffolding down and now next up is linear and i just scan for linear and i'm like oh, i'll put a green arrow there Boop, there he is so i'm gonna copy minus seven x into my answer no date to the prom. So that guy's just flying solo. And then plus nine is also flying solo. Nice. Let's do one more. I think you guys are pretty, pretty able to get this. I, I wrote six in preparation, but I think four will suffice. So let's do one more. And I'll give you a nice, easy one. Sweet. If you're willing, to, like I said seven minutes ago, my little sales pitch, if you're willing just to trust me and come along for the ride, this is a no-miss situation. Step one, I'm going to peel the parentheses off the first. What, By the way, let's classify these just for fun. What is the first polynomial? What would you call him? Hey, what would you say? It's linear because it's m to the power of 1. It's a linear binomial. Very good. And what would you call the second one? Linear. Another linear binomial. So let's do this. What's step one? Let's peel the parentheses off. And when it comes to this first set, I peel them off completely free of charge. Now, the second set, I peel them off, but there's a toll that I have to pay, right? What's going to... Uh -huh. Good job. Nice. So 3m and plus 3 more, more m's, you say, makes 6m. It would be. So I wanted to make sure that I got one example in your notes where stuff just cancels out. And that's the case with a minus 10 and a plus 10. And you don't put zero or anything. You said it's tough. The answer is just 6m. So. You guys have any questions about that? It's pretty straightforward, eh? Yeah, right? <laughs> cool. All right, I'm going to stop this and... Uh...